Mindless Idiots, Part 2. Two mindless, two idiots. Huh. It's a scorcher today. Yeah, it is. It's been real hot out there. Just like this show. I'm sweating all over. It's going to be hot. This show's <laughs> going to be hot. It's going to make you sweat. It's going to make me sweat. It's going to make you sweat. You all hear that? I got a sweaty one today. <laughs> yeah, so what's new since the, the previous episode, episode one? Um, so, yeah, I think the biggest thing that, that really pertains to this show, um, you know, music. Uh, me and my band, we, uh, we, we picked a name. We're going to call ourselves a Respirator. So, oh. I don't know, just kind of a cute name we were just all thinking of, just throwing out names, and we all like that one. Um, we'll probably make a debut in Bowling Green. Man. But. Have you been up to Toledo? Yeah. 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 I went up there for the first time uh, shortly after our last episode. Oh, really? Yeah. What'd you think? It was pretty good. Yeah, there's some cool stuff. Did you get to go see uh, Lake Erie? Uh, yeah, I was able to see the lake for a little bit. Um, I was hanging out with a coworker of mine okay. uh, who works at the radio station 88.9 Jazzy WCSU FM in Wilberforce, Ohio, a part of Central State University, an 1890 land grant institution. And, uh, you know, I think we were going up for a tech expo okay. in Detroit. So I also got to see Detroit. Detroit's cool. Detroit's yeah. really cool. Well, so when's the first show again? Uh, what's the date on that? Well, I'm not going to confirm anything yet. Um, I guess in a future episode, when I get a solid date, I'll have to plug that um, for our show. But And I'll definitely get more details and whatnot. So stay tuned for first okay. respirator show. Well, now I just feel like <laughs> interviewer here, but the respirators. Now, yeah. what is that? Well, so because we're a new band, we're still trying to figure out what music we want to play. Um, we're, I'm mainly influenced for the band. Not now that not that I just listen to indie rock or whatever, but that's kind of my influence going into this project. Um, and you know, I play guitar, and so I'm supposed to sing too. And that's a whole other issue I, I'll talk about in a bit. But. Um, I think the main, like, the biggest influence musically um, for m how I want the band to go are, is a band called Hoops, mm -hmm. and then a band called um, Plums, and then I brought the record for, or one of the records for um, another band that I really love, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Right, from Down Under. Yep, Australia. Um and then, trying to think what else, Meat Puppets too. Mm -hmm. Kind of want to go there. Kind of trying to stay away from like metal stuff, even though I really do love metal. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Well, how about um, like band member wise? Like how many of you? Okay. And what do y'all? Yeah, yeah. So we're four people. Um, I play rhythm guitar, although I do have a couple lead lines. Um, and then I'm supposed to sing. And then. I've got my buddy Carson that I met at college, and he's on lead guitar, and he's phenomenal. He's a great guitarist. Mm -hmm. um, old friend Dane, who's, uh, who's playing drums, he kind of dropped it for a while, but then he's picking back it up. He picked it back up, and he's sounding great. It's getting better and better every time we practice. Um, and then one of my buddies named uh, Weston, who I met at the climbing gym, and he worked there, and it's just like, talking to him and I was like well I'm looking for a bassist and he's like well I can play bass if that needs and just kind of went from there so we just kind of all got together and first practice we didn't really sound great we just kind of had to go slow through all the music and you know teaching songs that Carson and I had written because we we were roommates last year um, oh so these some of these are prior songs that you've yeah. already written that you're going to just sort of like bring new life into yeah and uh, you know I wouldn't even say they're whole songs they're definitely like more of like half songs where it's like we would make three or four parts but they just weren't quite there yet now they're quite there like the songs that we have written um, are sounding really cool the old ones at least um, the new stuff we're writing still a little incomplete and there's some weird timing stuff on it but we're working on it and it's sounding good nice but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to play. Uh, I haven't played. Last time I was in a band, I was in a really bad band my sophomore year of high school called Smoking Television. 
Mm-hmm. It was <laughs> it was like laughable. And, um, I'm so glad I didn't. No one saved any recordings of it because like if I did, I'd have to burn them. <laughs> there was bad, bad recordings. It's but, evidence. Yes, it yeah. is evidence. Yeah, but it was a good time. Like. For as crappy as we were, I did have fun, and that's really all that's supposed to be at that age, so. <laughs> this is another uh, record that I'm bringing out today. Uh, I like to play this one when I'm doing the dishes sometimes. Is this what's playing right now? What's yeah, it? yeah, and uh, it's like some 60s and 70s covers um, by Mr. Gerald Wilson and his orchestra. And I think it's even a gatefold. It is. Whoa. Oh. Oh, that's cool art. Because pe people like the, uh, the porn of the form gatefold sleeves. But uh, but yeah, we'll get to the King Gizzard here this in a groovy. little bit. Oh yeah, have you listened to them at all? Um, you know, I feel like they have so much that I don't know where to start, and I think that people might have their favorites. Yes. I don't know. Yes. They're always the same, but they're always different. Yes, that makes sense. absolutely. I think the album that I brought is a great starting spot. Um, really shows you kind of what the band is all about. There's this that album, and there's another one called In Your Mind Fuzz, which is another great starting spot. Because I know that's a big problem with a lot of people. Is I've asked people, have you heard of them? They're like, yeah, I've heard of them. And then it's like, I don't know where to start because there's so much stuff. And mm -hmm. some of their stuff is so different than their other stuff. Um, like they did a, a like a, a folk album kind of. They've mm -hmm. done a synth pop album. They've done an industrial metal album. And their their home base is like psychedelic, psychedelic rock. And, and it's like groove rock. It's always yeah. like very bass driven. It yes, it seems. Yes. And they have two drummers, and it's very like, I, I think they really nail what psychedelic music is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Like um, at least in in 2020 two or whatever um, but yeah yeah I'll definitely I'm looking forward to spinning them so and then yeah we'll let's, take this off here. yeah yeah let's go ahead and get an example while it's fresh in our minds so what do you think is this a uh, 33 33 and one-third I believe it is yeah I think it's 33 it's in the cool vinyl yeah I don't even know what the process is for that. <laughs> I think they just pour a ton of different colored vinyls, like vinyl mixes, into the press and then just kind of swirl it around. Just see what happens. Yep. Yep. All right. See, the only thing that's a little annoying is it's... Oh, yeah. You just got to set it there. You yeah. just got to set it right. And then turn it up. Crank it. Crank it. Crank it. Oh, there we go. And that's I, that should be all yes. right, I think. Oh, it's like old timey. There it goes. Uh, fade in. Yep. And so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could we get a filter, like the psychedelic, like fading away filter? It's so gatefold. goofy. Oh yeah, it's so goofy looking too. <laughs> and I like the bat. I don't know. They're just such a they're such a funny band. <laughs> cool about this album, and why this is one of their main albums when people think of this band is the name of the album is called Nonagon Infinity, right? Mm -hmm. And so. It's a concept album. I could not tell you what it's about, but I know it's about some sort of like evil presence and they team up to destroy. It's magic and a lot of weird stuff, right? Um, and you know, this symbol is very important to the album, but each song is a different spot within the story. And mm -hmm. as the story progresses and moves to the next song, they all fade into each other until you get to the end of the, the side and you have to flip it and then it will do the same thing and where the last song leaves off the first song picks up 
So if you're listening to this uh, this album on like mobile, you could loop it forever, and it would just keep playing through. So each song goes into each other, with the last one going into the first one, and that is like. I don't know. I don't really know any other bands that like will loop it like that. I know a lot of bands will do like the thing where they'll go okay. into each other. So, one song and then it'll branch off into yes. another that would loop back to that. Well, so it's it's only the last song goes in the first song. And yeah. I can play the last track on it. We can listen to the last, and you'll just hear it's like it starts right back where it starts, or it, it stops so right back where the album the starts. Which is, I think is really cool. And each song will end at a spot where you can't really tell the next song has started. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you can listen to it like it's all one track. Mm -hmm. And if you were to loop it, it would just keep going on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, and King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, they're really known for making their songs fade into one, each other, into one another. And so a lot of their albums, not all of them, feel like they're one giant song. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool. I, it's such a cool experience to just sit down and listen to and let them take you on like a musical journey. Mm -hmm. I love it. Sounds like I would really need a decent speaker setup for this too. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> or if you got some good headphones or something, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's definitely worth it. Yeah. And when did you first start listening to them too? So, oh man, I think, I'm trying to remember when I first, I know I got into them my sophomore year with a different album called uh, I'm In Your Mind Fuzz, mm -hmm. which is, um, it's similar sounding to this one, um, maybe a little bit more like happy, mm -hmm. um, this is kind of like grim sounding, that other one's a little bit more happy, um, and I was just blown away because I've really never heard anything like that, like this sound where it's like, in your face and just like everything all at once mm -hmm. and um, I listen to it a lot and then once you fall into the rabbit hole of King Gizzard you're not coming out like mm -hmm. you just go from one album right and then another album that they have is a, a folk it's a folk music album right a what music folk music oh right so it's kind of like folksy stuff and then they have a synth pop album I had and no idea <laughs> it's it's there's so much stuff but this album is a good starting spot because this sounds very, like this is very King Gizzard, you know? This is what people think they're gonna sound like. When they're yeah. going on tour, they're playing out. Yeah. Yeah, this is what I always sort of like expected. It's like, it's very like, just grooving and like yep. pretty fast and yep. kind of relentless. <laughs> oh yeah. Guitar tones are like high pitched and in your face with distortion. And then just like a quick drum beat that just doesn't stop. It's it's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, all this psychedelic rock seems like. Uh... Oh, that's that's it's the pitch now. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, <laughs> there we go. But all this psychedelic music seems like um, uh, good background for what we're seeing in space recently. Yeah. 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 Have you seen like these pictures of like these nebulous clouds that kind of yep. look like uh, kind of terrifying actually. They are. I don't know. It's it's weird. Have you seen the those pictures compared to the the same things but taken by the Hubble telescope? It's like uh, the yeah. same image but just like they can see like the actual resolution difference. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really crazy. Now which one had gone. the better resolution? It wasn't Hubble, right? Yeah, the James Webb, the James Webb one that yeah. just came out. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, Hubble was like really advanced for its time, if, if I remember correctly. I remember everyone talking about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we were, I was young. But um, but yeah, this, this new telescope, it's just so clear. And it's, I don't know, it's exciting to, to kind of finally like get out there a little more, you know, and see a little bit more. Yeah. Like, I mean, public access television is wonderful. Uh, public broadcasting is great. PBS. Yep. Uh, I've just been watching space shows every night. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, There's this one I was checking out. It was called uh, Space Time. Okay. You know? Is nice that with Neil deGrasse Tyson? I'm no. Thinking I'm thinking of a different show. Yeah, but, but this one, Space Time, it's just like... I don't know, this guy just goes on about 
uh, black holes. And That's awesome. Where the center of the universe is, and uh, he had this really good concept. It's like, uh, how do you point to the center of the universe? It's like, well, our understanding of space time is different, but you could basically point in any direction, right? And you'll be pointing to the center of the universe. That's so cool. And uh, the way he he started describing it is like, well, it's basically moving reverse in time. Any arc you go is still going to go back what to if I told reversal you in time. Therefore, you can point in any direction. You can make right? money playing video you games. Make your way back you to your so. initial point. It's so that's that's so hard to wrap your brain around. Yeah. Isn't it? So it's like all points are the same point. Right. Which means it happens simultaneously everywhere. Right. So there is no center point. Well, there is, but it's everywhere. Right. <laughs> but it's also not there. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not a scientist. <laughs> not a scientist. We can put the text there. Uh, so don't take my word for it. Take PBS broadcasters' <laughs> words for it. You know, I don't know if you've ever been like a, <laughs> uh, 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 a channel called Kurzgesagt. Mm -mm. They make like informative videos about science, and they're they're pretty big. I think they're from Germany. Um, I think I think they're funded by the uni like a university there, and I think it's somewhat publicly funded. Um, and they're they're big in Europe though. Um, Hmm. And they did a, they've done a lot of really informational content about you know like space stuff and and it's it's really digestible and like these a lot of really good analogies so if you're not a scientist you can understand what they're talking about and it's mm -hmm. it really gets you thinking it's and it, you know it makes me you know being it's like wow maybe I do want to go into science but no I don't <laughs> I just like to think about it I don't like to do the math <laughs> yeah. You know, the NASA making kind of like a... Didn't they announce that they're going to go back to the moon at some point? Um, I think by 2025 is when they said. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's cool that, like, we're starting to pick it back up again. Well, we never really went the first time. You don't think so? I don't know. I was just posing. <laughs> uh, but, no, uh, I mean, I think we probably really went. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. But there's always that, you know. I mean, lingering, it uh, was the '60s, you know, and I mean, there's there's arguments for both sides. I know. mean, there is there's always that slight distrust right? of our, uh, you know. Oh yeah, of oh everything yeah. that kind of like. Uh, Another thing too is kind of fun to believe that we didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah, it it's kind of fun to to be like, well, what if they didn't? And if they didn't go to the moon again, as someone who's used to the moon, then what else are they up to? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Office GS has a quick import tool which allows you to transfer all of your settings, bookmarks, browsing history, any apps. I mean, I'd request pictures of that from NASA if we could. You know, I know when the the astronauts did go to the moon. I mean, supposedly go to the moon. Um, <laughs> they did. <laughs> they they supposedly. Yeah. Well, yeah. We yeah. can't. We can't take a stance. Um, yeah. It's too political. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's when they, uh, you know when they decided that they were going to show us that they were going to the moon. Right. For sure. Right. <laughs> um, they, they set up, because I, I had to do a paper for this in school, but um, they set up these pretty much little mirrors, right? These mirror boxes by the moon base. And so if you have a strong enough laser system um, that's fine-tuned enough, you can tune it to these coordinates on the moon and shoot a laser at it and then receive the laser back, and then you sh shouldn't be able to do that if there aren't mirrors on there. I mean, if it seems like it's a, it's doable. And, oh yeah. You know, we ought to do it for ourselves. Oh, yeah. DIY moon project. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be maybe a <laughs> future episode. <just laughs> yeah. Launching lasers at the moon. <laughs> I'll start writing the grants. <laughs> yeah. Apply for a grant. Yeah. Get more taxpayer money. Yeah. It's like, sorry, we need to. Put a laser on the moon and get the signal back. <laughs> Which we need to. It's not actually that complicated. They set it up in the 60s, so we should be able to do it like right, <laughs> right. now. <laughs> there was this blogger for a while. Okay. That I was following back when blogs were still a thing. Interesting. Um, and uh, his name was Wobot. He was like this British writer, and then he turned into a uh, uh, a record producer of sorts. Uh, he was a DJ too, but uh, he decided he wanted to do a sample album out of nothing but uh, 70s pub rock. Oh, okay. And uh, which are records that are tend to be skimmed over and 
people don't really uh, yeah definitely uh, consider them for sampling, which is why he chose to do albums that consisted almost of Highly. nothing but that. That's pretty cool. So sampling's so cool. Yeah, uh, he used an MPC, I believe. Okay. Um, which I've never used, but I'd like to. It's called Chunks. Got a nice groove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny because it's like. It's it's cool, cool, yeah. 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 yeah, it's just like the modern update. It's like requires sampling, and so how do these right. records live in the future? You turn them into something like this. <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. There will be this moment where he takes like all the screams on the record and like <laughs> yeah. will be warped over each other. It's pretty humorous. That's awesome. It's a cool album art too. <laughs> I like the, the drawn feeling. Especially like on the mm -hmm. chunks. <laughs> 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 Do you know uh, the writer? Uh, it's like Simon Reynolds. He was a he's been a music journalist forever. I don't. Uh, but it's one of his friends, and he always like supports his friends' books. And okay. So he had a smaller book that was called like the Great Book of Woe or the Big Book of Woe. Okay, yeah. And uh, it was mostly just record lists. Of, right. Like, you know, so it's like he has them like set up by like what he likes best is like reggae, Afrobeat. Uh -huh. Kraut rock, you know, all that sort right, of stuff. Right. And uh, meanwhile, he'd, he'd DJ a lot. And then he got into this period where he was making like, I think he ended up making like five or six records. Okay. And I just thought about this one randomly the other day, this track especially. And I was just like, man, I, I wonder if it exists and if I can find it. And it was like 10 bucks, you know, on Discogs. So. That's nice. So I just picked it up. It's good. But. I thought it was a pretty fun concept too. Yeah, I think it's really cool. It's definitely interesting. Like, I don't think I've heard sampled music like this. So it's cool. <laughs> yeah, just store stuff that gets left behind. Yeah, which is cool. You know, it's like <coughs> why make new things when you could just reuse old things, right? Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, those are two things that are fighting against each other. It's like the want for the new. Yeah. And uh, you know the want to preserve old things, and yep. I think the intersection is in sampling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know. But yeah. How do you make how do you make something that's so old sound so new? Mm -hmm. And I mean, and that does a lot for artists too, yeah, who uh, uh, haven't been seeing a paycheck in a long time. Right. If someone like Kanye West comes up and samples some tune that he just finds in my random. Yeah. 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 And suddenly they're that mu yeah the sa the song that was sampled gets you know blows up you know mm -hmm. so it does a lot for for business in that way yep I kind of went nuts like a couple weeks ago and I I got a portable eight track player okay nice yeah and uh, it worked that's awesome for a while where'd you get it from like thrift store or something or I got one on eBay okay and then after that I picked up I went to Miamisburg and we picked up like. 20 or 30 different tapes. That's awesome. That actually worked. What? Huh? Okay, pretend you're not there. So awesome. Yeah, eight track tapes, so are uh, Can very good? peculiar. Uh, well, yeah, actually, I found a Nina Simone okay. uh, tape, and that was really nice. Yeah, that's cool. And um, um, they actually had a craft work tape too, but I didn't pick that up. 
uh, they wanted to sell it for very high, but everything else was right. like three for a dollar. That's awesome, yeah. yeah. I know, uh, I'm pretty sure Omega's got some 8 track stuff. Yep, I picked up some in Omega yep. too. I got the Letterman, which was, uh, okay. you know, they're kind of like effervescent, like the way they sound on the tape anyway. And okay. uh, like, they have a lot of covers and they're all very nice and pleasing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They they're not rocking covers at all. They're right. just like the most pleasing that's, that's cool. of covers. And uh, when you listen to it on an 8-track tap, uh, track tape, it sort of wavers, you know? Yeah, yeah. I like what we talked about. With, I like that, yeah. With like the Julie London record. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, uh, you know, and then it got to a point where the, the songs were blurring into one another. That's cool. That's really and, cool. Uh, and then it got to the point where it just wouldn't play. Uh, and so a lot of them actually go out pretty quickly. Yeah, definitely. You know? um, but there's a really nice documentary you can see on, on YouTube uh, that's called So Wrong, They're Right. Yeah. And it's people in the 90s who collected eight tracks and wrote about their eight tracks. And okay. Just their love of the medium. That's, yeah, I, it's... It's. I think that's like that and like cassette are really unique in that I believe music that's written to be released on cassette should really only be listened through a cassette or eight track player mm -hmm. because a lot of the times the artists will account for the wobble and the pitch distortion and whatnot and that will add like an effect to it right it's like they really know how to play into that into mm -hmm. that sound which is really cool and it's definitely something we don't get today with like the really c crystal clear digital audio right where it's like there's no character with the output it's just an output mm -hmm. and there's no distortion or anything it's just clear so yeah I don't know it's I don't know it's it's, it's interesting yeah so when your band decides to rec record to uh, vinyl oh yeah uh, you know do you have an idea of like song arrangement like how you're gonna put it on a record or you know I know because we all want to play different music and so we're not sure like we know kind of like how we want or at least the energy at certain points in the album to sound um, we have a couple songs and we're not really sure where they're gonna fit with each other or if we even want to put them onto the same album because they're so different so we might just write an album to be unique and then have show stuff that we only play at shows mm -hmm. and then release that as like its own thing. Um, that's kind of how I would like to do it, is kind of keep them separate. Maybe put one or two, like we could take a song and then base all the other stuff for an album around that music. Yeah, um, so like a studio dynamic and a live yeah. dynamic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then play both of them. Okay. But, well, hey. Um, I think we should end with some of the other record that you played here. Oh, oh yeah. wait, it's Melvin's. Yep, the Melvin's Houdini. This is a classic. A um, lot of metal people really into this album. Oh, this is a third man release too, huh? Yep. That's interesting. Didn't realize it came out on that. Do you know Kurt Cobain actually helped produce this album? This one here? Mm-hmm. No. Where is it? Yep. Produced by the Melvins, Kurt Cobain, and Garth Richardson. Mm. No, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. And I think he actually played a little bit of guitar on it too. There's the. You know, I was thinking about getting this drawing mm -hmm. uh, tattooed on me at some point because I really like this album. Yeah. And I think it'd be a really good tattoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the art on it's super sick. Yeah. Yeah. I think if I get a tattoo. I'm gonna get a Space Nebula Man on there. Should. High resolution. Well, uh, I guess it's it's time to wrap it up. But uh, till next time, this has been Mindless Idiots and we've got our records in our hands.